Hello, how am I to be judged? Hey, today is Friday. Praise God. Listen, Ali Barroso Green here. I, I hope you're being blessed by this truth that I'm sharing with you. Now, let's call for that daily bread. Say, Father, I demand and I receive right now my daily bread. It's coming to me now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now then, we are in Galatians chapter 3. So let's just continue from where we stopped yesterday. I'll share with you, God made a promise to Abraham. And then that promise became a covenant when Melchizedek met him. And what is that covenant? The covenant God made with Abraham is this. I'm going to bless you. And through your seed and through you, all the families of the earth is going to be blessed. All right? So now... God made a covenant with Abraham because of that promise. And what was the covenant? Everything I give to you, this is your part. You're going to give a tenth back to me. Take note of this. That was a covenant of that promise that God made. And that covenant did not end with Abraham. That covenant proceeded to his seed. So <clears throat> now we're reading in Galatians. He says, if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. And you are an heir according to that promise. So he, he told us all the things he was telling us from, from six, verse 16, Galatians chapter 3, from verse 16 to verse 29. He was telling us all that to say that the law is not the problem. Because the Gentiles, it's natural for the Gentiles who are not given the law. So how do we become part of this? He says, no, 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 no. no. The law was like a, a fence God was building to protect these people. But the truth now is that, hey, <clears throat> the law is not a challenge anymore. Why? Because, you see, God has gone beyond that. He has gone beyond Abraham now to the seed. See that now? It is the seed God is looking at. So he says, if you are Christ, then you are heir according to that promise. Now, if you understand the promise, the next thing you need to understand is the covenant. And the covenant he sealed, he sealed it in Christ. How did he seal it in Christ? It wasn't when Jesus died. He sealed that covenant in Christ when Melchizedek showed up to Abraham. That was when that thing was sealed. Say, how do you know that? Why did he now say cry? Why didn't he say seal or to seal? Who was Melchizedek? Have you thought about it? Who was Melchizedek? David tells us, speaking by the Spirit, he says, God was saying, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. He said, I have promised and I will not change it. You are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Priest to do what? So now we know Jesus is the priest. He was referring to Jesus as the high priest. Now the question is, what does the priest, this Jesus priesthood, what is he administering? Have you ever thought about it? What is he administering? Think, think, what is he administering? Now, as regard the blessing of Abraham, follow me now. He said, the one thing you must understand is what is the content? Of, he said, you, if you are Christ, you're Abraham, said, and you are an heir according to the promise. So now you want to understand what is the promise. If you're inheriting something, you want to know the details of what you're inheriting. If, if someone says, look, your name was in, in, in our father's will. Okay. You don't just go dancing. Oh, they say, my name is in the wheel. Oh, my name is in the wheel. So I'm a part of that family. That's not what you go dance about. What you want to know next is, okay, so what is the content of the wheel? See that now? What is the content of the wheel? Now, it is in knowing the content. Now you have gotten the information that according to that wheel, you are an heir. Because the wheel has your name in it. Okay. Being an heir is not enough. So what did the wheel say about me? Then they go check the wheel. And then they realize the estates in Canada. I will it to you. Whoa. 
So there is an estate in Canada. Yes. Where is this estate located? It's located in this city. This is the address of it. This is the person or the, the, the company managing it right now. Oh. So now you need to write. Now what is going on? You have just received an information. And sometimes in even in will, you find instructions before the will will be executed. For example, they say, if he, this person graduates from the university, then this thing should be given to him. Now, what's that? Now, he has brought in a covenant in that will. See that now? If you don't graduate from the university, it will not be given to you. So what do you do? Go work hard. I see that? Go work hard until you graduate. And that becomes your motivation for that blessing. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And that's because a covenant was in that will. Okay, so now, <clears throat> you, we have been made heir according to the promise. So what do we do? We go to look at the promise and find out the content of that promise. What is the content of the promise? The content of the promise is simple. God says, look, I'll take care of you. I will bless you. I will make you great. And I'm going to make you a blessing. And then he said, in you, all the families of the earth will be blessed. And we found out that he was referring to the seed. In your seed, all the families of the earth will be blessed. So now we stand today as Christ, meaning we are the heir according to that promise. So we stand today and we're wondering, how, how is God going to fulfill? Now we are the seed. And he said, in us, all the families of the earth will be blessed. So how is all the family of the earth going to be blessed? How will they be blessed? Now, what does God mean blessed? Now, notice he didn't say all the families of Israel. He didn't say all the families of my kingdom. He said all the families of the earth. All the families of the earth. All the families of the earth in my seed. Okay. So, so how do we carry out that? How is God going to do that? I'm here now. I'm his seed. We are here now, so what's going to happen? I'll tell you how it's going to happen. Now, that was the reason God had said to Abraham, everything I bless you with, keep a tent. He said, keep a tent. Simple, keep a tent. Now, this was the reason I was explaining that last week, Thursday, to you. This was the reason Isaac, eh, sorry, Jacob, Jacob was taught these things. He knew it. He knew it perfectly. So when, when Jacob had an encounter with God and God told him, I will bless you. You remember his father, Isaac, had laid hands on him and said, may God bless you with the blessing of Abraham. So he knew what the blessing of Abraham was. He knew what the covenant of that blessing was. He knew. So when God met him and said in a dream, I am the God of Abraham and I have chosen you to bless you and I will make you great and blah, blah, blah. And I'll, all, you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. He woke up from that sleep. No, he didn't have to go back home to tell his dad, I had this experience, what do I do? No, he knew exactly what to do. Because he has been told that this is how the blessing of Abraham operates. God adopts you and you respond by tithing. I'm telling you the truth. So the moment he heard God have accepted him, quickly he made a vow to God. He said, everything you give me, I will give a tent because that is how it flows. You don't bring the tent before he blesses you. No, it is the blessing he blesses you with that you take a tithe from it. Okay, so now we are the seed. We are the seed of Abraham <clears throat> and God has adopted us we were Gentiles before, but because of Jesus, we have now come into Christ. See, that's what Jesus came to do, to open the gate, to get us in. Now we are in. Now you see, from every part of the world, from every part of the world, Abraham's seed is there through Christ. Now we are here, but then how will the world be blessed? The world's not going to be blessed uh, different from the command and the covenant God made with Abraham. The world is still going to be blessed by the same. Now that he has adopted us, what are we supposed to do? We are supposed to come with him. Lord, and make the same commitment Jacob made with him. We are supposed to say to him, Father, 
I just realized I carry the blessing of Abraham. And we say it was Abraham's blessings are mine. We sing all those songs, right? But this is how we respond to it. Lord, of everything you would bless me with, I will give it tight. I will give it tenths. To He's only asking for the tenths. Don't be over religious. Some people say, eh, eh, me, and it's not the ten. I give God a hundred percent. You know, you know, you're lying. That's a lie. Because if God demands hundred percent for it three straight times, you will run. But he demands a tent. And, and you know why? Why is he insisting on the tent? Because that's what he, that's his wisdom. That's his wisdom. And I tell you, oh, the Lord, the day the Lord told me this, I was like, whoa. He said, son, if only my children will obey me where Titan is concerned, there will be no poor person on the face of the earth. I said, wow. He says, if only my children will obey me where 10% is concerned, just the tithes, there will be no poor person on me. Why is God insisting on the tithe? Because he claims ownership to it. He claims, on, that's why in Malachi, he said, will a man rob God? He meant it. Why? Because in the covenant, 10% of the blessing belongs to him. If you don't give it to him, then you are robbing him. See that now? He blesses you, 10% is his. Every child of Abraham carries that covenant. And if you are the seed of Abraham by Christ, then you carry that covenant also. So, and God said this to me. He said to me, he said, so, you know, because, you know, sometimes people want to be over-righteous. But, but I give him everything. Now, your thought of giving him everything is leading God into corruption. Because the Lord said this to me. He said, son, in your nation, do you know what misappropriation is? I said, yeah. Do you know why the, 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 pass, the government passed the budget? The government sent the budget to the National Assembly? And do you know what the National Assembly does? I said, yeah. The National Assembly receives the budget from the, from the executive and they look at it, they add and they subtract, they query, and then after everything, what the National Assembly does is to pass a law that the budget is going to function. Now, you know what that means? It means the constitution have given them such powers that you are only allowed to spend this amount of money. You can't spend more than this. And also, in, in that same budget, you have to state where you're going to generate the money from. So when they pass the law, they pass the law such a way that you cannot generate money beyond this. See that now? Now, now that's why... In truth, I want you to follow this. In truth, you know, for example, in, in Nigeria, we had um, issues with, for example, they said Jam used to remit a certain amount of money and then a new um, head came in and then everybody realized that, come on, you mean Jam could generate this amount of money? But you see, the fact that Jam could, was generating that amount of money, they could not put it legally into the government. That's why they were still in it. They could not put it legally into the government. So even those people, they take them to court and with a good lawyer, they will be free. Why? You can't prove that they stole money. If you're proving that they stole money, you have to prove where they stole the money from. And then you have to also prove that by law, that money was generated. But the law in the budget does not give them the permission to generate that kind of money. See, so you see, that's why Jam even today can say, okay, we're reducing the cost because we noticed that after sales, we're making a lot of money and this money is not made by law. So we have to reduce it. You understand that? And that's how these things function. So God was saying to me, if this thing, if, if I'm, I'm the righteous God and I have made my budget and passed my law according to my budget, and what was his budget? 10% of everything is going to bless you. Anything outside 10, that 10% 10 is extra budgetary affairs. And you know, the, a president can be impeached if he spends outside what was passed in law. The president can, is an impeachable offense. And that's, that's knowledge, common, common knowledge. And so Lord, the Lord said, what I spoke about is the 10%. And it is with that 10% he has planned to bless all the families of the earth. How? When we bring our tithes to him, 
today. Who do we bring our tithes to? We bring our tithes to Jesus. He is the Melchizedek we have today. So when we bring our tithes to him, what do we do? Just like when Melchizedek instructed Abraham what to do with the tithe. He told him what to do with it. It's the same way Jesus tells us today what to do with it. Now, what does he tell us to do with it? He tells you, oh, go give it to that, that fellow over there. Go give it to that person over there. Go give it to that stranger over there. Go give it. He's the one that instructs it. And wherever he is, he instructs you to take it to. He can instruct you to take it to your church. He can instruct you to take it to another church. He can tell you, to, oh, give it to that evangelist. Oh, give it to that, that widow give it to your neighbor or give it to that Muslim. Oh, man, why, how can I give my... Oh, he said it. He said it. All the families of the earth shall be blessed. Brothers and sisters, when God blesses you, the tithe in your hand, remember, it is a covenant of blessing he wants to use to bless all the families of the earth. So you ask yourself, if you are the seed of Abraham, are you part of of this blessing that God promised that all the families of the earth will be blessed. I just showed you how. If you are not tithing, and not only tithing, now this is where the issue of tithing is having an issue, a problem. We have not been tithing right according to the teachings of God, of, 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 of even the scriptures. We have not been doing it right. So what we do mostly, we we'll take it to church, take it to your church, take it to your church, but that's not what God ordained from the beginning. What he ordained from the beginning, that all the families of the earth. So, hey, there are families that God will use you to reach out to. Every time he tells you, take your tithe to that person, he's sending you to a family. You know what he's doing? He's bringing the blessing to that family. Hey, and that family, you take it there and say, the Lord said I should bring this money to you. Oh, really? Um, but 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 I didn't tell you I, had, I needed money. Said, but the Lord told me. And any person checks it out, it is the money he's been praying to God for. Praise God. What is that? The love of God, which is the blessing of God, has come to that family. Hey, brother, it means God loves you. That's what it means. It means God loves you. You also, in your time of need, God will send somebody to you, comes to give you his tithe. They don't have to tell you that this is my tithe. You don't even have to tell anybody that this is my tithe. It's between you and God that we talk about tithe. But when we, when we are commanded who to give it to, we give it to that person as a command from God, expressing the love and the blessing of God to that person. When we begin to do this, brothers and sisters, all the families of the earth will bear witness that they have received the blessing of God. Praise God. My time is up, but hey, this is an instructive message. Wake up. Wake up. Don't believe those that say you should stop tithing. Rather, begin to tithe right. When God blesses you, take your 10% to him as a mark of honor. Do it first and say, Lord, here's your money. What would you have me do with it? So what if God doesn't say anything to me? Are you God's? If you are God, you will hear his voice. Jesus said, my sheep hears my voice. It's as simple as that. God bless you. I, I pray that this weekend will be your best ever. I pray you see the hand of the Lord increasing mightily on you. And you will be a blessing to all the families around you to fulfill God's word in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you next week. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.